So let's talk about the In the Heights drama that is going on, all the colorism. Girl, where are the black Latinx folks? Where are the dark-skinned black Latinx folks? Because they were not. Where are the Afro-Latinx folks, the dark-skinned black Afro-Latinx folks? Because they were not in this movie. And the girls are going in and dragging it as they should. Um, because the clips and stuff, I haven't seen the movie. It didn't. Musicals don't really. I don't like musicals. I don't like musicals like that. But um, I did see some clips and I saw the conversation. It's been going on for like a couple of days now since it's been released. And the girls are just like, are dragging it. Um, and the, you know, the creator of it has came out and was like, gave an interview because he got asked in an interview by Afro Latinx, um, dark skinned black Afro Latinx person, woman. Um, like, sis, what's it giving? Like, where are the people? And. What a dark skin folks said. And he was like, oh, da da da. And just trying to give some excuse and like acknowledging it. Oh, yes, it was. But we, we, we tried to get the people who were the best for the part. We were not concerned with that. That is a piss poor excuse. That is a piss poor excuse. That is, it's giving, it, uh, it's giving reverse. Uh, <laughs> what is the word for it? Oh my God, it's at the tip of my tongue. Girl, if you wanted dark skinned Afro Latinx folks in that movie as leads and stuff, you would have found them. You would have found them. Like, cut the mess out. Every one of them passed a, a, a brown paper bag test. Every one of them. Like, every one of them. And it's like, girl, we are in 2021. We've been having this conversation. There's books written on this stuff, there's articles, there's videos. There is so much content about colorism and these things. And yet, y'all are still making the same mistakes as if the conversation hasn't been had already. But at this point for me, it seems as though it is intentional, which is why I'm 100% support other girls dragging it. Um, you know, and girl, Gina Torres, it's trending right now on Twitter. Uh, and she she made a point and she said that the producers of, of these like these shows and stuff, these, they, they don't want an Afro-Latinx woman like her to be in these movies or shows. They want an Italian looking one. And when you say that, you mean like, they mean like just, I call it spicy white. Where it's kind of like, yeah, you have, but you, it's giving light skin. Lighter skin, like girl, it's ridiculous. Um, it is <sighs> when I became an actress, I quickly realized that the world liked their Latinas to look Italian and not like me. Like, this is an ongoing thing, and I'm not sure when she gave this quote, but it's real. And we and we see it's just I'm tired. I'm just so tired. It's it's just, it's I'm so I'm tired of this and I'm also tired of every time there is y'all want to do some diversity stuff and have a queer person in a movie or a show they are always if not in the black if it's always a black queer person or a black person in it they gonna have a white partner let me tell you something I was watching High on the Hog that docu-series on Netflix it's one of the best docu-series I have ever seen in my life good it brought me to tears good I will be talking about that on Patreon the person who was doing the narration and everything, I was I was like, girl, this man got a white wife. I just know it. They got a white partner. I just know it in my spirit. I'm on the phone doing my like face routine. I'm getting ready to record. My friend Harold Pope like digs it up, searching it up, find his Instagram, and of course he got a, a, a non-black girlfriend or non-black fiance wife, whatever. She's non-black. And it's just like, I'm just so tired of y'all. I'm tired. Like, that's why I cannot watch another Dear White People. I'm not going to watch a Dear White People when the creator of this is trying to drag white folks while also being in a relationship with a white person. I, I can't I can't do it no more. I, I can't do it because then y'all anti-blackness shows up in the content that y'all create. And that's why we could not get any of the black queer folks in here in the show to be in a relationship or to be attracted or any type of way to, to black folks. Like the same thing that happened with um, Empire, where they had uh, just 
some small Latin characters. He was right here in a relationship with a Latinx person. I was like, girl, what's going on? And then when he did get in a relationship with a black person, the black person was abusive. Like, it was just like, it was a deal. Like, I just, I can't deal. So this is a long history. This is the stuff that uh, Janet Mock was talking about in Hollywood. It's just like, I know, like, the powers to be a chain, like, girl, no ma'am. It's not giving that, like, it's not giving that, like, girl, you've got to change this up. Like, these producers and stuff, they do not want to see that. Like, oh, girl, ain't nobody finna watch that. Ain't nobody finna watch that. That's, I'm telling you, that's what producers like, oh, girl, like, you need to add some whiteness in here. Like, cause it's, folks ain't gonna pay attention. That's a little bit of the issue with Pose, now that I think about it. But they tried to add a lot of white characters into the first season, and then they, they stopped because it was like, girl, stop. But they try to do that to get white people to watch Pose as much as they watch RuPaul's Drag Race. But honestly, RuPaul's Drag Race would not be here had it not been for black, trans, and queer folks. Period. So they are benefit from it, do it, and write it up, and then, oh my God, this is so good, and this, it's just mainstream. It's the same thing with some of the porn stars. I love Raheem Down, and I've had a conversation about Raheem Shabazz um, a couple of times. And I had to explain to folks, like, Raheem, the Raheem I know I've been around, likes black men. Like, I was literally seeing him do a scene, and he had company, and the company came over as a black man. And he do a lot of scenes with white folks. And that's because white folks make him money. Like, doing scenes with a lot of white actors makes him money. Like, because it's mainstream. Like, they're going to consume that. White folks are going to consume that. And it's just like... These companies know that. These these production companies know that. Like, we have got to write it up because we don't want this to be a black because we're going to limit ourselves. And it's just like, nobody's willing to take a chance to see. And, and this is what happened with Profits are all in it. Same thing with Legendary. I want to watch Legendary. I can't. It's just too watered down. They got folks who are not in ballroom, a part of the judges. They got all, and I love Megan. Um, you know, like, not all of the judges have any connections to any of these things. Um, but it's just like, girl, we got to get these folks to watch because they wouldn't watch. And it's just like, how do we know they don't watch? Because they don't want to spend the money on that. They don't want. They're spending money on, on like some other crazy movies that, that won't make no dime. But they ain't willing to spend no money and, and invest in no black folks. I'm telling you, to give you an example, that movie that Robbie Downer Jr. played. Uh, what was it? What was the movie about them animals? Oh, um, I ain't gonna tell you how much money they spent on that movie. That movie flopped. Did anybody watch that? Dr. Doolittle, didn't nobody watch that? But they spent that money out. You better believe they paid, uh, um, Tom, what's, I'm about to say Tom Hanks. You better believe they paid Robert a good coin, especially if this was after, this was during his mom, like, girl, they, was, they paid him and didn't get no return back on that. But they won't do that with black folks. They won't do that. But moving on, um, that's my spit. I, actually, there's this guy named Kirk Wrights on Twitter. He's a writer, and he was talking about, like, interracial relationships and how they appear on these black shows and he did a thread and he asked a lot of black folks, black queer couples, post you and your partner and it was nothing but a bunch of black queer folks. Black part, I loved it, loved it. Um, moving on to some other stuff I want to talk about, a girl, the girls were talking about some catering, um, um, counseling, I said catering, counseling catered to you because it was giving um, submissive, slavery, something, da 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 da. It was a running joke on Bossip or whatever. Bossip started that mess. Or somebody started with a funny tweet. Um, nobody's interested in counseling catered to you. It's just a joke. Like, yes, catered to you. Definitely give it some type of, um, you know, probably some levels of pick me a little bit. But a lot of that, a lot of those, those songs and stuff were giving that. Like, Destiny Shire got some other songs which just, um, it was like kind of like slut shame a little bit. Like they had a couple of, but that was the era. That was what's going on. And now, like, look at the content and the music that Beyonce is producing now. So it's just like you learn, you evolve. You pay attention, Kevin Hart. So um, it was a big thing. The girls were talking about, and you know, the folks who be talking about council culture took that and ran with it, not knowing that it was a joke. Like not knowing that the Katie to You thing. Nobody's trying to cancel it. The song is beautiful. And to be honest. Girl, we only playing cater to you to the men who are showing up for us in more ways than just one, period. So we ain't out here, you know, putting your do-rag on. We ain't doing that for nobody who can't pay the light bill on time, period. We doing it for some folks who got it together, period, who deserve it. Hey, hey, somebody getting fired. Come on, B. 
Um, let's talk about Freak Nick. Freak Nick is supposed to be returning sometime later on this year to Miss Atlanta. And the budget is very limited, girl. They got, um, <laughs> who they got? Uh, what's that like? Scrappy performing. I think Adina Howard's supposed to be doing that. That's cute. Um, girl, Freak Nick with iPhones, I don't see it. Like, these folks don't even understand consent. I, like, girl, no, ma'am. Like, no, ma'am. I don't see it. I don't see that happening. I just, I don't want to see that happen. But y'all let me know. Will y'all be a part of Freak Nick? Will y'all be there grinding and doing all of that? It sounds like some drama for me, and I won't be partaking on that. Let's move on. Let's talk about something very, very serious. Um, the situation that happened at Nellis in, in D.C., um, where this black woman was dragged out of Nellis. Nellie's um, apparently, you know, allegedly said she didn't pay her tab, she didn't, whatever, whatever happened. They dragged her out of there by her hair, and it was one of the most disgusting videos I have ever seen. Like, it was disgusting. Like, this woman was being dragged down the stairs. Like, that was triggering, that was trauma. I, I just, I can't. And Nellis has responded and, and was just like, girl, we uh, fired the, the, like, security team or whoever was a part of that. We, we, we moving, whatever. But it's like, no, Nellis, y'all got to do more than that, girl. Y'all got to do more than that. Like, y'all got to do more than that. Now, the, the girls, like, was out here protesting. Shout out to my guy, Preston. Um, he was out there on the microphone getting the girls together. He was like, girl, we will not stand for this shit. Like, hell, now, Preston must have been pissed off. Preston took off his stiletto pumps. Let me be scrubbed. Preston took off his Chelsea boots. Great, put that robe up. You know, he a lawyer. I love Preston, child. Oh, he's so fine. Oh, he's so fine. I love Preston. Um, and Preston was on there like, we not playing. We not playing. Um, and was organized and like, tell him, like, we not going to Nellis these, like this pride. We shutting Nellis down. To the point that Nellis has responded and was just like, girl, we need our corn. We got to do something. Like, that video was disgusting. Like, if that was a white woman, that would have not happened. Like, these folks be taking pride. When black folks step out of line, there are other black folks or other folks. There are people who are ready to tell black folks, how dare you? We'll, we Now, you know better. It always gives that. I don't know if it's just me, but when black folks step, like, do a little too much, even when we talk about, like, customer service and black folks just, like, not like it's just like they have to tear into them and it's like it gives slave energy like how dare you and i just got to see this video this girl was talking about customer service and dealing with bad customer service and she said she will make your day a living hell if you give bad customer service like it's just like girl is it that serious it's not that serious sis it's it's really not it's not at all um but if that was a white woman she would have not been dragged like that girl that whole place would have been um, shut down, baby. They would have it would have been a Starbucks on top of that if that had happened to a white woman in that restaurant, um, in that bar. So, girl, um, I don't live in D.C. I've never been in Nellis. I've heard about it, but it's a lot of stuff going on. Like, it's a lot of stuff going on. Like, girl, the girls was like, D.C. What's the tea? Like, y'all got the cicadas going on. It was a thunderstorm the other day. Like, girl, I, like I want to go visit D.C. But, girl, the way y'all were out here doing all this and being disrespectful to black women. I don't know, girl. Y'all gotta clean that out real quick. So, um, other things to talk about. I saw a video of Miss Billy. I'm calling her Billy Eyelash. Because, baby, the way I was blinking my eyes, there's a video that was going around of Billy um, Eilish. And, girl, it was an old video. And she was, she was doing some problematic stuff. Like, girl, the, the way she was talking, and she said, she used, she was saying some derogatory stuff about like Asian folks and like she was doing some black accent. Girl, it, it, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, girl, it doesn't surprise me. Like, it's as relatable as these folks try to come off. Billy Eilish is not relatable, girl. Like, sis grew up, her, her parents had money, they had money. Like, girl, like, child, please. They are, what they, somebody said they are, her family out here gentrifying California right now as we speak. Girl, uh, but tell me if y'all saw that. I don't, mm, that's not my realm too much. Like, girl, this white artist, I don't listen to her like that. The girl said her music is good. Um, they said, like, she's a version of Lord. I love Lord. I listen to her. We never be royals, royals. But I haven't, um, I haven't listened um, to none of her music. Moving on since we talk about music. Girl, um, did anybody listen to the Migos album? <laughs> girl, they, they, girl, the Migos album, <laughs> girl, they dragged it a little bit. Um, they out here doing press. 
Which kind of tells me something like, yeah, it's probably struggling. Like, the Migos probably going to be on their last leg. I don't know what the um, Culture 2 or 3 or whatever has given. I think it's the Culture 3. Is it the Culture 3? Y'all let me know. I don't really care. Um, but they was on uh, The Breakfast Club, and they talked about, you know, Charlemagne and talking about Soldier Boy. And Charlemagne said that Soulja Boy ain't from Atlanta. Baby, Soulja Boy got on Instagram Live and went off and was like, I was out here doing stuff in Atlanta. I, da, 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 da. Like, Soulja Boy, you are not from Atlanta, sis. You grew up in Batesville, Mississippi. Like, girl, if I if I Google it right now, uh, just look, where is Soulja? Okay, so he was born in Chicago. He moved to Atlanta when he was six. And he moved again to Batesville, Mississippi. Uh, I don't know. Uh, he moved. I don't know what, like, when it comes to, like, how much time do you need to be in a city for you to be from that city? Like, how does that work? Like, how does that work? If you were born, that's the same thing that um, that light-skinned girl did. Um, I can't think of her name. She was born from Ohio, she grew up here, and then she said she's from Atlanta. Like, she's from the South. I'm just like, huh? I just, I don't know. I guess where you, you have roots, you have community at. Uh, but, girl, I don't know. What, what do y'all use? Because I know Soulja Boy from Batesville, Mississippi. I know him from Batesville, Mississippi. Like, I just, I feel like y'all be trying to choose uh, the, the most popular city y'all are from. Um, where y'all spend some time at when y'all be doing y'all stuff. Like, it, it's just not making no sense to me. It's just like, girl, you was born in Chicago. Yeah, you moved to Atlanta, but then you was in Mississippi. Da, da, da. It's just like, girl, I, I don't know. Like I, like, I don't know. Like, I would just say I'm from everywhere. Like, I, I, like, I would just explain it like that, but I would be out here, I'm from Atlanta. I'm like, what is the big deal? What difference does it make? Do you get, like, credit or something for, like, being born? I just, I guess some street, I don't know. It's, it is crazy to me, girl. I, I don't really get it. I don't. I don't. So, moving on. Um, what else I want to talk about? I got on my list. Um, Trina and Eve's versus t is tonight. Is y'all watching that? I don't think I will be. Uh, somebody invited me to a watch party for it, but I'll be over here working and editing videos until then. So, y'all tell me if y'all watched it. How did y'all like it? Let me know in the comments. Um, I want to end this talk about a little bit of politics. Um, Putin and Biden had the. Geneva meeting in Switzerland, girl, they had their little talks. Um, apparently, it was constructive from what Putin is saying and what Biden is saying. Um, it was constructive conversation. Um, and apparently, they talked about, you know, the, the hacks and stuff that were going on, the, the ransom hacks. Girl, because you know they had, girl, you know they had, girl, you know they had um, hacked, like, not Russia, but some folks in Russia had hacked. The pipeline, they had hacked the um, the meat plant, um, they had some other stuff, and reports have come out and said that they have the ability to, you know, hack into our electric grid. So it's it's serious, like it's very very serious. So um, Biden talking to him, um, hopefully like something come out of that. Well, hopefully something came out of it. But Putin said, "Girl, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't know nothing about that." I, I don't know nothing about that. Like, all that, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Um, but, you know, they talked about other stuff that's going on. And um, a lot of folks are saying that, you know, something that, nothing is going to come from this conversation. Like, this Putin has done this before. Nothing's going to come from this. Da 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 da. Um, but a lot of people are talking about it specifically because the last four years with the Trump administration, like, Trump was closed up with Putin. Like, literally was in Helsinki. And to, like was telling reporter in like a news conference was saying like a press conference was saying oh like he trusts what Putin has said when it comes to um, um, you know interfering in elections like girl I ain't do that and Trump took him as a, as his as his word over the intelligence that his own folks were telling him so girl it's just like seeing different things and even Putin has said that you know Biden is. He ain't no Trump, but basically, like, he's intelligent, he know his stuff, and he, 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 he seemed like he got it. So, I, I, to be a fly on the wall, to hear the things that they were talking about, I'm very curious. Like, we got, like, when I was looking at, like, Biden traveling and doing all these things, and, like, 
all these folks in power, all these leaders of these foreign countries and stuff, all of them were white. Like these folks are like this G Summit, all of them white. Like all of them are white. These folks are the ones who have access to bring us into like a nuclear like foolishness. Like it's crazy that like one person, like a couple of people have that much power. Whew, girl, it's girl, I don't even know, but I haven't watched it in the last two hours, but the last time I saw it when Putin had gave his press conference, Biden was giving his, and now he's on his way back to DC. Um, so hopefully the, the talks were a little bit productive to the point that our infrastructure is not being hacked and stuff, but it shouldn't even be a situation where one person, like you hacking into this one, like this one company affects so many people. Like it should not be like that. Like that's an issue, and then all this is pro all this stuff is privatized. So you got folks who are responsible for the gas, the fuel that gets us back, and, and, and like they had to pay how much money, like ransom. Like it's just, girl, I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe that private companies should be selling us no oil and all the other stuff. It shouldn't be selling us no gas. Like it's, it should not be to the point that if one little one company is responsible for so many people's lives. And they're they're living like it's just too much. Um, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but I just want to give y'all an update because one of my guys was like, "Tell us what's going on, break it down." But I could break it down a little bit more. But girl, I'm a little I'm a little burnt out now. Like I'm a little burnt out, especially after all the stuff I've talked about. But I end this. I appreciate y'all so much for loving on me and watching my video, checking out my content today. I told you I had a lot of content today. I told y'all that I love y'all. Y'all make sure you are, um, if you're a patron, check out the recent content I just uploaded to Patreon. Make sure you're commenting, messaging me, telling me some content that you want, especially for those who are on higher tiers who have access to make demands or what videos they would like to see. Also, I got some other content coming out this week. I will be talking about some other stuff on YouTube. Um, I love y'all so much. And until next time, I'll talk to y'all later tonight. Bye. Thank you.